In the media, the debate about Pakistan is whether they are incompetent or corrupt. There is a hidden third choice in that debate in that Pakistan could be both corrupt and incompetent. More and more, I'm coming to the conclusion that Pakistan was pretty brilliant in solving what for them was a big problem. And the incompetent vs. corrupt debate is either psychopolitical warfare or the limited perspective of Westerners. So 9-11 happens and it's a monumental tragedy. Bin Laden takes credit for the attack and America declares a war on terror with Bin Laden as enemy number one. Osama goes into hiding. There's a huge reward for his capture and there's a lot of hungry people out there. He's got a big problem. His face is well known, he's taller than average, and in a non-diverse cultural geography where most men of a certain age have dark hair and beard, he can't very well change his appearance. He is motivated not to get caught because he wants most of all to continue planning attacks against America. Martyrdom can wait. Pakistan has a problem. They know Bin Laden is limited in his freedom and is probably moving back and forth across the Afghani-Pakistan border. They know it's only a matter of time before he's caught. But what do they do when they catch him? American aid to Pakistan is tied to Bin Laden's being able to terrorize. The Pakistani population is highly anti-American, with a perhaps qualified support of radicalism, and the support of Bin Laden the man himself. They don't really support their military government for being too in bed with America. So the government can't very well hand Osama over when he's caught. So Bin Laden's got a problem. Pakistan's got a problem. And their problems are different than the American problem. I think it's plausible that Pakistan went on a secret hunt for Osama. And when they found him, they offered him a solution. A solution that solved their problem also. They offered Osama house arrest. And I mean offer in the La Cosa Nostra sense, in that it wasn't an offer he could very well refuse. He was essentially under arrest, either that or certain death at the hands of the Americans. So they build this compound that, when you look at it, you wonder whether it was designed to keep someone in or keep others out, or both, again that third choice. They give him certain privileges. He gets to have a few of his wives and children with him, to sweeten the deal, I suppose. But the meat of the deal was that he got relative security, and he got to continue his Al-Qaeda activities, which benefited both himself and the Pakistanis. His Al-Qaeda buddies had no incentive to liberate Osama. He's safer in the hands of the Pakistanis for their purposes. The Pakistanis get to control the situation. The compound where he was held looks very much like a prison to me. It, it wasn't luxurious, although it said that he wasn't a man who cared for luxurious surroundings. It looked very stark and basic. I heard reports that he'd go on these one-hour walks in the walled yard, and I keep thinking if, if you're in hiding and get the opportunity to go outside, wouldn't you stay out for longer? It sounded to me like a prison walk that was controlled and monitored. He didn't have weapons or guards to protect him, which fits my idea that he was really a prisoner rather than a fugitive. And I think it's very possible that he was held perhaps at a different location earlier than five years ago. So that's my take on it. 
me and my me and my fellow had a little discussion over breakfast about the whole thing and yesterday the bbc had a special where they flew through a 3d creation of the compound and it really struck me how prison like it seemed so that's it thanks for listening guys and please feel free if the spirit moves you to insert your opinions on the whole thing thanks for listening